Look around you. How many people do you recognize? How many of them are your friends? How many of them would consider you as their friends? Most people will probably say that you're their friend. But how much do they know about you? How many of them consider how you feel? How many of them do you think would be there for you when you need them? The truth is, not many. And unfortunately for some, none. That is because no one likes you. Just kidding. Your family likes you. Your friends likes you. And since you're watching my YouTube video, it means that you're a person that is open to new ideas and to change. And that makes you an extraordinary, nice, and someone who will subscribe to my channel. Hence, I'm pretty sure I'll like you too. But seriously, don't be surprised by the small amount of people that will stand by you when you need help. They say a fake friend is like a shadow. They sh appear next to you when you're at your brightest, but disappear when you're down. In life, you probably would have a handful of friends. But these are people that will stand by you, rain or shine. These are the people who will be there when you need them the most. Yet growing up, we hear stuff like, you shouldn't choose your friends. You need to be friends with everyone. Don't judge. That's nonsense. I once heard this phrase that said, there are three kinds of friends. Friends for a reason, a season, and a lifetime. Now some of us here are fortunate enough to have lifelong friends. But for the majority of us, most people in our life are part of the journey and not the destination. In this video, I will be showing you three compelling reasons why you should choose your friends. You are the average of five people around you. You may have heard of this one before. It is a concept developed by Wilfred Taylor, but popularized by Jim Rohn. While the statement is catchy, it is not exactly accurate. We are all unique individuals with different personalities. But what is accurate about this statement is that our behavior, how we act, how we dress, how we carry ourselves in public are greatly influenced by the people around us. Think about the five closest people around you. This may be your friends or your family. Jot down their characteristics, such as the way they behave privately or publicly, the way they speak, particularly their catchphrases, their hobbies, the way they behave under stress. Basically, anything related to them. Now, try and compare their characteristics to yours. You would be surprised how similar you are to them. You may even find yourself developing some new habits after hanging out with these people. What this tells us is that our behavior is highly influenced by the people around us. In the book Persuasion by Robert Caldini, he mentioned that in situations of uncertainty, we tend to look around us on how to act. And this results in developing the characteristics of people around us and incorporating them into our daily life. The more you hang out with them, the higher likelihood you are going to be more like them. Now, the number five here is of course just a guide. Recent research has showed that the influence of people around us extends beyond the five closest people to us. Regardless, if you hang out with a group of party people, you will find yourself getting drunk, hitting the clubs every weekend. If you hang out with highly organized people, you will eventually become more organized. These people determine what kind of conversations we will have at the dinner table. They determine the kind of lifestyle you want, and they determine how you behave in various aspects of life. You can't hang out with negative people and expect a positive life. The 50 billion dollar man, Dan Penner puts it best. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Okay, I can't do it as well as he does, but if you guys have a chance, you should actually check it out how Dan Penner says it. It is really scary. There are some people in your life that you just have to avoid at all costs. 
If you are the average of five people around you, think about what kind of person you would be if you hang around with Party Dude, Gucci Go, Weed Boy, Pill Popping John, and Lazy Aaron. Probably someone you don't want to hang out with, right? The point is, it is important to choose your friends as they will determine what your future would be. Choosing the right friends can be tricky and tough. But here's the trick. Humans are creatures that can be easily influenced. Here is where you can apply the law of attraction to it. Say, if you want to be positive, hang out with positive people. If you want to be organized, hang out with organized people. It is a synergistic relationship in where we keep each other in check. All in all, you need to be sure of what kind of person you want to be. If you are a grown up and have already decided to put clubbing behind you, it makes sense to stop hanging out with people who clubs all day. You need to be sure of who you are and what the future would be, and surround yourself with like-minded people that can lift you up. In the process, remember not to burn any bridges. Remember that these people are once your memorable seasons. Being surrounded by the wrong people makes you the loneliest person in the world. Hence, you can't expect to hang out with negative people and lead a positive life. Some people are part of your journey, but not the destination. Think about a time when you were 18, hanging out at clubs, downing Jager bombs every weekend. Hell yeah, those were fun times. But as you grow older, your responsibility changes. You need to focus on work, family, and getting ahead of the rat race. It is not possible if you're still hanging around with the same group of people who just want to do shots and get drunk every weekend. If your friends are not ready to move on, maybe you need new friends. We gain and lose friends all the time. As time passes, we all go our separate ways and conquer the world in unique ways. Some of your friends from high school or university would feel foreign when you meet up after a while. They may have been part of your wonderful journey growing up, but they are not necessarily who you would call BFFs or remain as people who you need the most at this time. And that is okay. It is good if you make efforts to maintain your friendship. I have a group of high school friends who will always make time for me when I go back to Singapore. But if they don't have time for me, it's okay. Calling a friend who was once your close mates as your current best friends, even though you guys haven't hang out or talk to each other for a very long time, can make things very awkward for both of you. As I've always said, there is no need to pretend. People around you can always sense the vibe that something is not right. Knowing someone for a significant amount of time does not mean that they will be your best friend. I have known people for a very long period of time and I don't know much about them other than professionally. Yet, they're those people that you've just met for a short time and you can really feel yourself clicking due to similar interests and goals. Sometimes, time does not make everything better. What matters is the amount of effort we put into this friendship to make it a long-lasting friendship. For those of you, if you have a childhood friend who is still your current best mate and your best friend, make sure you hold on to them. Because if the friendship has lasted this long, chances are you will last a lifetime. So, should you choose your friends? Comment below and let me know what you think. If you think I'm right, please remember to subscribe. If you think I'm wrong, please subscribe anyway. <laughs> but let me know what you think, because I'm interested to hear what you have to say. And as always, thank you very much for your support, and I'll see you next Friday.